Howdy, friends. This is the Magic City Motormouth Fast Eddie Lane with your invitation to join yours truly, along with Mark Mabo Bowman and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, every Sunday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 3.30 p.m. Pacific, for Beyond Ringside Live. Wrestling, mixed martial arts, sports talk, and a whole lot more. Keep your eyes open on BeyondRingside.com for all of upcoming show information, and of course, catch us on social media as well. Until then, we'll see you this Sunday, 6.30 Eastern, for Beyond Ringside Ringside Live on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. say greetings good evening how you doing 15 after the top of the hour on this 11th day of august 9 15 eastern 8 15 central 7 15 mountain 6 15 pacific time yes somebody may actually still have daylight somewhere in the country right now and it's specific time i think i may have i've been stuttering for the last 48 hours Welcome to Beyond Ringside, Back to Basics, the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Study Lane, live from Studio One in Birmingham, I mean Birmingham, Alabama. And joining me in parts not quite figured out because he's on the road more than I lose train of thought, I'd like to welcome good friend of the family. Some know him as Nate Stein, others know him as the Phenom Phil Stamper. What's up, my brother? Not much. How are you? <laughs> the living embodiment of chaos. <laughs> I like that. I need to remember that one. I popped a line earlier today. A coworker of mine was trying to say something, and I was saying something completely off the cuff. I said, look, for as long as I've been doing some things in this world, if you can impress me, I'll be surprised. And if you can surprise me, I'll be impressed. That, okay. so, that sooner or later will be a trademark phrase. I think we'll put that on the slideshow this week and at least try to get the poor man's trademark. Uh, speaking of going on, dude, what's been happening up in your neck of the woods? Oh my gosh, everything is going on. Um, I will say, uh, let's see, let's talk, let me try to think how I need to count this down. I am sick, so I apologize to anybody if my voice decides at some moment just to change octave or to stop. <laughs> uh, so I got uh, knocked out on Saturday. That was fun. Um, uh, like lay on the ground for a few little bits, <laughs> unresponsive. Wow. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, yeah, I have things and stuff happening. Well, in on top of everything, out in ring, outside of ring, in building, outside of building. There's uh, one thing that I noticed a few weeks back, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to speak to you, in particular because of this one. Well, one of the topics. <laughs> You and I play human chess as far as um, who can do what in what amount of time and who can stay busier. Um, I saw the press release, and congratulations, Heartland Wrestling Association. Yes, it was a very last-second deal. I mean, it was, I mean, I'm trying to think of the timeline of everything. Basically, on a Wednesday, I saw an announcement that Heartland Wrestling Association was for sale. I actually told other people about it first. And then the next day I happened to follow up with the guy who was selling and said, so, you know, how are things looking? What's going on? And nobody had moved on it, he said. Really? So I made an offer. Um, and I'm just looking at the financial reality of my current situation. Because a week before I had paid for surgery. Uh, and I said, you know, it's out of no disrespect. I just don't have that money right now. Um, he countered with what I thought was a reasonable. I recountered. Um, and ended up making a purchase for Heartland Wrestling Association on that following Saturday. So in three days, I became the owner of Heartland Wrestling Association. Absolutely incredible. Because you acknowledged on social media <laughs> the same thing that a lot of us acknowledged when we heard that name. And there is a great track record and a great history for Heartland Wrestling. Not only just being a former WWE developmental territory, but also being a good hotbed where a number of great stars have emerged. Absolutely. Now, the loaded question is, when things kick into gear, how much pressure are you going to put on yourself to put everything in place to try to match parallel what a lot of people have done in the past with that company? Oh, See, that is the dangerous question. 
Um, and I, let me just be clear, you know, a month, two months ago, I didn't know that I was going to be the owner of HWA. Uh, and to now know that I am responsible for that legacy, that's very important to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I even made an offer in the first place, because it does have that kind of legacy. Um, but I'm also very realistic. I mean, I think first, my first job that I have put myself to task on is to organize that video library, to put it, I mean, it's all there, but some of it is just not in order. Right. Um, and certainly you can go to Smart Video right now and look up Partly in Wrestling and you can see, you know, a lot of their events, a lot of their footage, the best of John Moxley, the best of Sam Italian. But they had a, a TV show for six years, yeah. a weekly television show. And that has never been cataloged. Really? So I am watching a weekly television show and cataloging it. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, so I am watching that fast forward. I am skipping through parts because I am trying to get it down as fast as possible. But it's gonna, it takes time. On the live event side of it, of course I am interested in running a live event. But I'm not a, I'm not a dummy. Um, there's going to be a lot of groundwork that needs to be covered because I have always known I was moving to the place of running events and as all, have always known I need to do it the right way because I see way too many people doing a fly-by-night job, that belief of I'll put up a ring and they will come, um, a lack of advertisement, a lack of a solid financial foundation. And so I want to move forward intelligently. Um, and there goes the octave. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> the next thing I, I know I need to do is I already have crafted out sponsorship letters um, so I'm going to be reaching out to businesses uh, to see about getting a financial sponsorship. Uh, and again, I'm very fortunate that a Heartland Asso- Wrestling Association has that kind of legacy, especially in the Midwest, that I feel I can reach out to businesses and that they will be interested based on its legacy. Um, I will say I was pleasantly, very happily surprised. I shouldn't say surprised, but just very happy that the response I've gotten about taking over the property has been very positive. Um, not only from the wrestling community, but also from, well, uh, the inside wrestling community, I should say, because our fans are certainly the biggest part of the wrestling community. Right. And fans in the area are in love with HWA, and they they're, are th- wanting so badly for it to come back. Um, and it's interesting to also hear from people who are inside the wrestling business who are like, oh my gosh, you have no idea what Heartland Wrestling Association means to me, or meant to me, or I... I grew up in the Cincinnati area and watched it weekly on television, or I went to all their live events, and you have no idea what it means. Um, I did have to tell somebody, and I, I won't out this person here. Uh, I did reach out to a friend of mine about, you know, when I, when I bought it, because I knew he was from the Cincinnati area, and he instantly went into fantasy booking mode and, you know, made, I would say, the rookie mistake of reaching out to people saying, did you know that I'm going to book you for HWA? And I was like, wait, what? Um, so just to be clear, I have no date set. I have not booked anybody. Um, cause again, I want to make sure it's financially solvent first. So I need to build up my own capital. I need to build up the sponsorship capital to be able to, to do business in a way that I feel is the right way. Um, again, I don't want to run into this blind. I don't want to be stupid about it. Um, so far I have talked to every single one of the past owners of HWA from Les Thatcher on. Uh, and all of them have been very encouraging, but they are realistic about the challenges that, that are existing in the specific area of Cincinnati, of just, you know, hey, this is what we experienced when running an event. And, of course, I've been a part of wrestling now for real many years, and uh, I am very familiar <laughs> with, with the pitfalls that a lot of promotions fall into, and I'm trying to do my best to avoid them. Now, that is one thing that I can sit back and say that you're Catbird on this one. You're sitting in that legendary Catbird seat, because for as much marketing and promotion and behind-the-scenes work that you have done for other promotions, you do have that little bit of a, I'm not going to say, I'm going to say a pure advantage. I mean, there's no sliding on this one. You do have a good, solid advantage in play because of the fact that you've seen what some promoters will do, won't do, can do, can't do, are prepared to do, will never even consider doing, and you've been able to see how some things work in certain areas. Now, you're making a reference to Ohio, which, and also, let me come back to this one, because when it comes down to it, a lot of people look at HWA on the same level as they did for OVW in its pure run, as well as uh-huh. uh, as well as championship wrestling from Florida before everything morphed, 
um, because there are some areas that just never, I mean, WWE developmental pretty much stayed east, so to speak. I never knew of that many other than when Sean was running or when they were running uh, Texas Wrestling Federation and Sean was using that for development or a theater system. You never really heard right. about that much going on out west. That's why it's like you'll still sit back and say Midwest, and I'm sitting back going, okay, this state, this state, this state, and then you say Ohio. It's like, no, we're coming back this way. <laughs> we're going back to the right on the map. Right. And, and 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 to be clear, I have nothing to do with Ohio Valley wrestling. Um, in two different respects, people have gotten HWA and OVW confused. They're right. very, two very different properties. And then right after the sale of HWA was announced, OVW also announced that they had uh, sold into or had a private partner sell into them, which may or may not be a storyline. I don't know. Um, and that's one of the intrigue, and I kind of like it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, really. Um, and, and I cannot tell you how many people called me the morning OVW made that announcement. I was actually in – what was funny was I was actually in Ohio when it happened, and the amount of people who started to call me to be like, what did you do? I thought you were out of money. <laughs> or I thought you, like, did you, like, do you have that kind of money to now buy these two legacy promotions? I'm like, what are you talking about? Um, so Joey Image, who was, I think, the first person who called me. Oh, was, God. I was just like, I, I have no idea what you're talking about, dude. Like, what, what happened? <laughs> I'm on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a name that is very familiar around these parts on a number of shows for the Beyond Ringside family of shows. Joey Image, dude, what's up? How you been? Long time no talk to. And... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I figured that phone would be buzzing from him. PDF and Q. But um, yeah, d now I'm just going to lay this one out there because you've already said that it does add a certain amount onto your shoulders. But when you hear people mention Heartland in the same breath as what OVW has meant to people, what Florida meant to a lot of people, I mean, you, you're sitting back and you're looking at it and it's like so many people also came out of Deep South and lo and behold, that one doesn't get mentioned in the same breath. And there's still been a couple of other developmental territories not to mention solid territories that don't get mentioned in the same breath as heartland so when you when you hear about the legacies in place does it make you go oh boy <laughs> um i mean yes and no because fortunately it has a good legacy and that i'm very respectful of and i'm very appreciative of and if it didn't have a good legacy i i probably wouldn't have been interested in the property uh, and I say that I say that with all due reference and respect, um, because I, you know I think of some of those other promotions that have been around forever, and they don't have that same kind of tenor, that same kind of legacy that Heartland does. Um, and I want to be respectful to that. At the same time, uh, a few people have told me about you know their vision of what they would like HWA to be. And I've had to stop them and say, well, wait a minute. Again, not there yet. Uh, we're getting there. Um, <laughs> patience, but, children. Patience, young right. Jedis. But it can't be a replica of what's in the area. And when I say that, that means absolutely no disrespect. I, cause I, I still do business with Rockstar. I love Rockstar in Dayton. Um, but I, if I make it a replica of Rockstar, well, that only means I'm going to appeal to the same fans that are going to Rockstar. And that's no knock on them. But if it's only the same thing, well, then what's the appeal? Why would why would this grow differently than what rock stars? Why would I want to compete with, especially a rock star that has their own solid venue that is running events at least once a week, if not twice? It, it, it doesn't make sense to me to do that. So it needs to have its own kind of tenor, its own kind of feel, uh, uh, its own talent pool. That doesn't mean... People from Rockstar aren't going to be done at HWA, and people from other promotions aren't going to be at HWA. But it has to be able to stand on its own two feet. And I think because it's been fallow for about a year, right. uh, actually it, almost exactly a year since their last event, um, and they had had some difficulties even before that, that it has to be established on its own two feet to be able to move forward. Now, segueing for a hot second, you said you've done work with Rockstar before. They're normally running, what, every Wednesday? They run every Wednesday up at 1106 East 3rd Street in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I have memorized that address now. Uh, and then on the first Friday of the month, they have an IP review. Right. Um, it's sort of their big event for the month. And then on the third Friday, typically, they have Rockstar Ludus, which is 
uh, it's not a student show, and, and I think there's been this sort of this misperception. It's an opportunity for new talent, whether in the area or trying to come into the area, to get exposure to the rock star crowd to see whether or not they should be moved on to the main roster of rock star. Now, if I remember correctly, another good friend that I've actually worked with on a few occasions, uh, Ron Mathis, I believe, is their champion, right? Uh, yes, he is. I've been, yes, currently he is their champion. Yeah, relentless Ron Mathis. I've worked with him with uh, IWA Deep South before. Uh, Mathis is is an amazing talent, yes. and it he continues to grow, and that's the thing that I think is very special about him. Now, I know, like I, I know that you're still very much in the formative phase. I know that you're still taking things very much and very, <laughs> very wisely, one step at a time. You have done well, young Jedi. And uh-huh. do you know the general area that you're going to try to start, or have you gotten that far yet, or you're going to balance everything out to begin with before you even start looking at venues? Yes. <laughs> do all of that, yes. Um, I, have a ge- I have an idea of the area I want to run in. Um, I, I did get an opportunity when I was in Ohio uh, about a month ago to take a look at some places, um, but you know, no money has exchanged hands, no contracts have been signed. Uh, so again, I, I'm very hesitant to say this is where it's going to be and this is how it's going to happen because it's not there yet. Um, it will get there. It's not there this second. Um, and that's the thing too is, is I'm, again, I'm very happy to see what everybody has said in their reaction to it, but I do not want to jump the gun on this. Um, and you said another question that has suddenly left my brain um, that you said the area, you said something else, and then you said something else, and I don't remember the third something else. Actually, it's cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you answered it when you were talking about the. You said that you've not gotten as far as certain things yet. You're trying to take everything one step at a time. Right. And by the way, folks, once again, you're listening to Beyond Ringside Back to Basics, 29 before the top of the hour on this Tuesday. August 11th, the Magic City Motor Mouth Fast Steady Lane behind the control panel being joined by a good friend and special guest, the Phenom Phil Stamper. And I want to go ahead and throw this one out there. Okay. You've been tremendous about working to build and continue to run a calendar of events in pro wrestling. How many times, legit, how many times do you just want to throw a heavy object at the computer screen when somebody sends you something five minutes before the event and say, hey, can you put this on there? Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, what kills me is I get some of those. I get some of those that, you know, I put out I typically, and I, I'm a little behind this week, I typically put out the calendar on a, on a Sunday or a Monday. Right. And for the, for the next two weeks, not, and I post it every week because, I caught that some people would, you know, they didn't mean to be delayed, but they didn't realize, oh, my gosh, the thing is this weekend, let me put it out. So I put it out two weeks in advance so people can update it. Um, so I will get on the Friday, hey, tomorrow I have an event. I didn't see it on your calendar. Can you update it? No. No. <laughs> I can't. I thought it was sending out to all these websites. I, I'm sorry. But next, for now, I was like, there was no slight. Certainly next time, please let me know in advance, or if you know your dates now, I will gladly add them so I have them for the future. Um, but what kills me the most is there was a good amount of, of trolling for web, on websites to find when upcoming events are. And yeah. what kills me is, especially on the, the, the promotions that only exist on Facebook, is I'll go to their site, I see nothing about their upcoming event. Right. I go back a week later, oh, here's the pictures from last night's event with 10 people in the crowd. Yeah, and that's the part that really just gets me is because I've had this discussion with a number of different promoters and everybody gets it until it's time to get it. And I think that should yep. be, that's that's going to end up being a Facebook status. People get it until it's time to actually get it. Right. And I'm going to put and I'm going to put over and I I, I want to make this very clear because there's a lot of guys in the world of professional wrestling who are like, "Hey, I've paid my dues. I don't need to do advertising anymore." Why? Well, I, I want to be clear about two things. One, People are wondering about, uh, there are, I'm not going to out there. There are a couple of promotions that I'll be upfront and very honest that they're using backyard wrestlers. And I am, I'm not advocating it, but you know what? Those backyard wrestlers have the heart and the passion for professional wrestling. And so I've seen two, of, two promotions I can think of right off the top of my brain that have drawn in over, over uh, 1,500 people because they were, went absolutely nuts about trying to advertise to their local market. Now, one realized the fallacy of their way and then sort of changed direction and brought in more names and talent and better talent and 
that sustained that crowd. The other one couldn't bring in the talent to sustain that kind of crowd, and now only draw 30 people. Um, <laughs> but, but for a good year, they did. Uh, so, you know, you, you have to be able to back it up, too. But I say that, on, on A, on that side, that you need to have the heart and put it out and do it, but you're never too big. Matt Tremont, who just became CZW World Heavyweight Champion, right. just became in a company that travels and has events internationally that's going to be moving to pay-per-view. Matt Tremont goes to events and venues and hands out postcard-sized flyers to advertise for On Point Wrestling and for CZW. So I don't ever want to hear anybody say to my face, well, oh, I'm beyond that. Oh, I've paid my dues enough. I don't need to do that. I mean, from the even the simple aspects, I definitely do get my, I, I am very understanding of this point, too, because somebody asked me this recently, and I had to apologize because they, they, they're like, you know, I use mostly local guys. I'm willing to pay you your fee, but I need you to come down here and help promote. And I said, well, I live eight hours away from you. I can't physically just come down there on a Saturday when I'm going to be at another event and, and flyer. I'm like, but I do all this online marketing piece. I can do that for you. And he wasn't interested, which, okay, that's totally fine. Um, I get those definitely. There's definitely reasons why some people can't travel the distance to do some of that. Right? That's, hey, I'm there. But if you are down the street from the place that you are working, why aren't you helping to advertise? Right. And, and even from the simple aspect of, do you go on your social media and just say, hey, the people who are following me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and whatever else are, let me tell you where I'm going to be. So those people who are following me directly can now know where I'm going to be at. Um, and it shocks me by how many people just utterly, completely cut that off. Um, and and it, to a degree, it's disappointing. Now, you know, some people get very bitter about that. And they say, well, it's the promoter's job to promote. And I agree with that entirely. But you're part of the event too, right? You want to show that you that people are coming to see you, right? Maybe it'll up your pay. Maybe it'll up the entire crowd size, which means, and again, in turn, will up your pay. Will make it more interesting for other people to come to the event because they feed off the energy of the other people who are coming to that crowd. You've been able to add to that. People are screaming and yelling and are incensed because they see you there. You don't think those other people that may also come in and be drawn by that energy are now not going to be rooting and cheering or doing for you. I, it, it just floors me when people have a self-destructive behavior mm. towards the thing that they are trying to promote. And the right. thing they're trying to promote is themselves. And But it's certainly the place that is showcasing them is what is putting them on, and people seem to forget that. Was that a tangent and a ramble? I'm so sorry. Oh, no, it's actually beautifully said. Now, I'm going to throw this one at you, and this is something we've discussed here on, the, on various shows here on the station. And by the way, real quick, I want to go and throw this one out. Thank you to everybody who is listening this evening, courtesy of the Beyond Ringside Radio app, available for Amazon, Android, and BlackBerry. Thank you to everybody who has been downloading it for your phone, for your tablet, for your other portable portable devices. Thank you. Uh, still trying to get everything in place as far as Apple goes. God knows it's a pain in the ass. Plain and simple. Also, Apple users, don't forget, if you're listening through computer, don't forget Apple users. You can catch us on the TuneIn radio app, which is available cross-format. But like I said, to everybody who's been downloading the BR radio app, thank you so much. You know, in the world of mixed martial arts, on the localized level, you have a number of companies that will get, that will have the fighters street level selling tickets for the show. Mm -hmm. And they get a mm -hmm. cut off those tickets. Why do you think pro wrestling has never really caught on to that concept? Oh, I think they have. But again, I think what it turns into is, because uh, I'm not going to, I almost said a name, and I'm going to like be very careful. Um, there are some people, that's how they get on their own events. I hate to say it like that, but, oh, you, if you can sell me X amount of tickets, I'll put you on the show, kid, um, whether they're worth it or not. Um, so there is, a, there is a lot of that. Um, and, and the schools that do it right. So the, the, let me back up the promotions that have schools or training centers, um, that then feed their promotion directly. Typically, if they do it right, those kids are out flyering and advertising and ha having tickets to, uh, to sell. Um, that is, 
the way it should be done, and, and some good talents do do that. I, uh, somebody who works up in the Pennsylvania area told me that he's made a deal with promoters of, you know, I will show you that I am worth bringing in. Pay me X. It'll be it's lower than I want, but I'll make you a deal. I will directly sell X amount of tickets to make up that difference, and I will guarantee that they are paid people who have put butts in seats. Because I'll be honest, because I have seen also the the failure of that system where dude says, oh, I have 50 people who will love to come see me, and then they pay for those 50 people's tickets, and nobody comes to the to the event because the promoter thinks they've sold those 50 tickets, the 50 seats are accounted for, and then nobody fills those seats, um, which is, you know, that's a very risky and dangerous thing to do. Um, so this guy went out and proved that he could bring the butts to the seats, that they were paying for their own butts to be in those seats, and now he's one of the most over people in those promotions. And the promoter made the decision like, oh, well, you know, I don't think you need to sell these tickets and hawk them because I can see you are bringing in this crowd. They'll come again because they want to come see you. And he's proven it time and the time again. I've just noticed that, and this is something I never really see on my personal level. I don't hear about it that much as far as pro wrestling goes. And I have to wonder because I know that you've got those that are willing to get out there because they want to get booked on shows that are willing to get out there street level and do something like that. And I also know you've got companies that have a core group that the promoter trusts that would do that. But I often have to ask myself, would tr- I mean, how deeply does trust come into play as far as being able to do that? Because you and I both know. Now, look, kids, for everybody listening, let's put this on the line. And I'm going to put this out there in no uncertain terms, and nothing I'm saying at this point reflects anything that Phil may follow up with, because I don't think he's going to, I mean, he's going to have his own opinion on this one. There are people, workers, wrestlers, trainees, rooks, and greenies, legends, vets, old hands, good hands, solid hands, that you can trust on the business side. There are some that we've all, A-L-L, all run across that you wouldn't trust with a wooden nickel. To use one that my dad has been throwing at me for the last two weeks. He's bringing it back. He's 84. God love him. He's been back to saying, don't take any wooden nickels. I'm 49. I remember those. Because <laughs> I've, got, yeah. I've got a bunch of them in a safe deposit box. Guess what? <laughs> They're worth more than a nickel. And, um, but that trust factor. And normally a good promoter will understand the concept of who they can trust and who they shouldn't, not can't, but shouldn't. But how deeply do you think that trust factor runs to where a promoter will sit back and say, yeah, if I let one person do it, somebody else is going to get chapped. So I'm just going to hold that off. Did I make sense on that one? That last part threw me off. Say that very last part again. How hard is it? I'm going to I'm going to redirect. How hard okay. do you think it is for a promoter who wants to incorporate somebody into their core group to be able to trust somebody in that regard? And do you think it's also a case of a promoter goes, OK, I've got three guys over here that I can trust. But if I do it for these guys and I don't do it for the others, somebody's going to get butt hurt. Oh, absolutely. That's a, that's a huge element. And I see that all the time with promoters. Um, and again, without outing people, that's where I honestly see the failure of, of a lot of it. So I, I was, as we were talking about the advertising piece, I, uh, I was thinking of a couple of things about how some promoters don't know how to tell their students, their young boys, um, their trainees, the new kids they're bringing in about some very key elements that nobody really talks about. So, Bob, who's in the bit, who just started, let's say he's at a rest, at a training school, and you know he, he's just about to get on his first event. Has that promoter talked to Bob about how do you, how do you talk to your family? How do you talk to people you know about the fact that you were in the wrestling business? Um, what do you protect? How do you say I'm going to be on an event? How do you talk up pro wrestling? Um, how do you engage people who you might not normally talk with and say, hey, have, are you into wrestling? Did you ever watch as a kid? Hey, did you know that there's this event 20 minutes from here? You know, you should come check it out. Oh, by the way, I work with them. I'm going to be on there if you want to come see me or support me. or you know, There is some of that lacking. I did hear, I've heard from so many promoters 
who have said, who have their own schools, I can't trust my guys to go out and advertise. I'm like, what do you, what do you mean by that? Well, if I give them a stack of flyers, they'll just never do it. I'm like, well, A, that's a problem. B, that if you're saying that to me, then this is what you do. You grab a stack of flyers, you take all of your students, you say, okay, we're going to this physical location. You go flyer that strip mall altogether. You go flyer a neighborhood in the right way, not leaving it on cars so it damages windshields. Please don't do that. Um, <laughs> you go to a mall. You go to a WWE event that's in your local or your nearby city. You go to another promotion event and pass out flyers as people walk out the door. Um, you, you know, you go with them and show them how to do it, how to talk it up. Um, or talk with them about how to do it and be there with them as they do it to make sure that they are doing it and know how to do it. Um, and that floors me that, that people would, would say that to me, that oh, I, I can't expect the young boys to know how to do it. Uh, now, I will say on the aspect of a street team, because, you know, some promoters go, oh, well, you know, we have this loyal fan base. Wouldn't it be great to get, you know, some of the fans more involved in the advertisement of, our, of the company? Oh, that, that's great. That's a great idea. The problem in the execution that I've seen is, remember, when people are putting up flyers inside of businesses, they are representing your company. And as the person who's walking in, in a state by which they would be a good representative of your company. Um, and I just, I, I, I'm not knocking on anybody who's ever been a part of a street team or a, any fan ever, but just really for a half a second, if a promoter really looked at it, who is grabbing that stack of flyers and what stores are they going to go walk into? Um, I, just some horror stories I've had on street teams. I had people go, I don't like this flyer. I'm going to make my own. And literally they took a marker to a cardboard box and drew their own flyer and passed it out to businesses. Uh, I've had people in all sorts of dress and smoking God only knows what walk into businesses to try to you know, advertise for your company. Right. And it's like I need, and I'm like, think about it from another perspective. If you promoter opened up the 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 Phil Stamper House of Pancakes, um, oh my god, now I'm hungry. Uh, <laughs> I just got through uh, eating spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm sick, so I haven't really been able to eat. Uh, I've had soup today. Um, uh, Go to a Mexican if restaurant, opened, or if you opened up the franchise of Phil Stamper's House of Pancakes. Wouldn't you think you would advertise? Wouldn't you think you would do something, especially if it isn't right along the beaten path to try to get people to come to you? Are you talking to your local businesses? Are you talking, uh, putting up a flyer on the, or a sign on the street that says, House of Pancakes this way? Um, and people forget sometimes, because I will see on flyers a third to half the page is taken up by the logo of XYZ Company. Okay, well, what does X, Y, Z have to do with the price of tea in China? You're promoting wrestling, so put wrestling under fire. Put something that leads to an interest in people wanting to come. Uh, put people that people would want to come see, whether they're a recognizable name, whether they're in good shape, whether they even there if there's something comedic. But there's a lot of not great. Put the other wrestling flyers too. Take an action shot from a wrestling event and make that your flyer. Um, who says you need to put on every single face that's going to be physically on your event? I think Thank that's you. a little overkill. Thank you. Because um, you know you're going to leave somebody out if you've got a surprise match coming up. Right, yeah, exactly. And oh, and he got more opportunity than I did, and blah, 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 blah. blah. And I, I tried to help somebody redo their marketing because, honestly, their flyers were crap. And he didn't want to listen, so I took an action shot. I put it up there. It was enough because I, I thought one of the two people was no longer with the company, but I did it in such a way. I found a picture that you didn't really see that guy's face. So you didn't know who it was. The other guy was like one of their champions, and everybody in their promotion went eight because, oh, well, I'm not on the flyer, and I'm more important than the guy that is on the poster. I'm like, no, you're not. Like Nobody knows who you are. I hate to say it like that in four out of five times. No, I'm sorry, but... It's going to be the wrestling that settled, not Bob Smith and Tom Dodd and whoever else uh, that are on the event. It's going to be the fact it's wrestling. So put over the wrestling. And if you don't have a recognizable feature or if your flyers look like crap, then find a way to maneuver it. And I need to be very clear. I don't know Photoshop. I, 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 I know I some. Don't. 
so I use Publisher, and I, I manipulate photos in Publisher, and yeah. I try to be more creative about it when I work on a flyer. Right. Um, and I've pissed people off when I've done it, and I'm like, I'm sorry, it's, I'm talking about wrestling. It has nothing to do with whether or not you are good, bad, ugly, interesting, or whatever. It's you need to draw people there because it's wrestling. You need to put the date on your flyer. You need to put your location on the flyer and the time. And the ticket Other price that, wouldn't hurt. Anything goes. I'm sorry, go ahead. And the ticket price, too. <laughs> I think that could be flexible. Like, I do think if you can put it on it, put it on it. In other cases, I'm like, eh, maybe just get some big cup and then we'll get some surprise. Now, I'm going to throw you a curveball. We're going off topic. Shifting gears. Yeah. Over the last few weeks here on Beyond Ringside Sports Radio. And I'll put you on the spot on this one. And from this point, I don't read too much into it. You're just going to pick a name. Okay. What we've done is we've held a mock fantasy draft. And yes, I know I use the word mock and fantasy at the same time. We're not doing it on the point system or anything like that. We just, if we were starting a promotion and we want, and we basically held our own fantasy draft. We've done individuals, uh, men. We've done tag teams. Now we've just done the women which actually was a lot of fun doing all that many women in one day. And <clears throat> I'll get in trouble for that somewhere down the road. Somebody will shoot me or send me a bill. I will give you the first nine. There were three of us in the draft, myself, Mark Mabo Bowman, and the Oracle of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis. And we went round, around, around. One person per round. I'm going to give you the first nine names that we took, and those will be the exempt list. I want you to pick who your first three would be that you would try to sign. And once again, folks, if you're listening, don't take offense. Please don't. We're not playing favorites. It's just hypothetical, theoretical. Mm -hmm. Put those in play and say it three times fast. First, yeah. first round was, and they are in this order, myself, Mark Bowman, and Wicked Nemesis. Jessica Havoc, Paige, Awesome Kong. Cheerleader Melissa, or Alyssa Flash, whatever. Uh, Becky Lynch and Charlotte. Kimberly, okay. Bailey, and Natalia, or Natty, taking those nine off the board. Who would you pick for your first three rounds? Ooh. Um, Hanaya. Nice. Like Howling, yes. Um, let's see. Oh, this is, my brain is going like, uh, 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 um, because I've done work with both Valkyrie and Women Superstars Uncensored. I know. Um, uh, Athena. Did you say Athena as in uh, based out of Texas? Yes. Okay. And, huh. Uh, oh, this is difficult. Um, Sarah Del Rey. Unfortunately, Sarah would have to be taken off the board because she's no longer in ring talent. She's working developmental for WWE. But she could, and that's the thing that kills me. Um, okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because if it hadn't been for the factor of that one little glitch, Sarah would have been my first round draft choice instead of Jessica. Sorry, Jess, you right. would have gone to number two, and uh, Melissa would have gone to three. Kim would have gone to four. Here's here's the names that I took in my part of the draft, and this these are in okay. order: uh, first round through tenth round. Jessica Havoc, cheerleader Melissa, Kimber Lee, Mischief, Crazy Mary Dobson, Leah Von Dutch, Ivelisse, La Rosa Negra, Serena Deeb, and Cherry Bomb. Ah, uh, Serena Deeb. I love Serena Deeb. <laughs> um, oddly enough, uh, well, I don't know. Oddly enough, I know somebody who knows Serena and knew that, you know, of course she knew that Serena was in wrestling and she didn't find out that I was in wrestling until much later and yeah, it was a whole weird, awkward, a whole weird, odd conversation, and <laughs> that's how I I met Serena that way. It was such a weird. It was almost awkward um, because we met in a non wrestling context, talking about wrestling through somebody who had nothing to do with wrestling, and then to try to explain that we had never been in those like the same kind of circles because she worked with other people and I worked with other people, um, and then she, of course, she went on the WWE and now the NA. Um, yeah, it just got a little awkward, but I love Serena Deeb. Oh, I've enjoyed watching her for a while. I'm just, oh, I'm me glad and him. Me and him. Why didn't I say me and him? I'm so sorry. She Nicely done. Me. Do what? Nicely done. That one can still go. 
there you go. So Mia Yim is my third pick. Yeah, because we we actually decided, okay, uh, Mabo decided to go kind of like pure WWE because his first four were Paige, Becky Lynch, Bailey, and Sasha. Um, fifth was uh, Gail Kim, then Santana Garrett, the current NWA Women's Champion, Leva Bates, Hudson mm-hmm. Envy, Veda Scott, and Taryn Terrell. So, and uh, Wick decided to go Awesome Kong, Charlotte, and Talia, Tracy Taylor, uh, Lefisto, Casey Carlisle, Pandora, Brie Bella, Marty Bell, and Melanie Cruz. Tessa Blanchard. Yep, that's another name that um, that was on our board, but we didn't go in the top tens. Ah. Yeah, it's it's weird because the, we originally were going to go fives. And realizing the fact that you need to have at least 10 for a good, strong women's division. And that way you can have good, that you can have true diversity as far as that goes. Now, as we're coming up five minutes before the top of the hour, I want to let everybody know, longtime friend of the family and the host of Cause and Effect, which has previously aired here on Beyond Ringside Radio Network, Robert Cosper, the cause slated to join me in just a little while. Um, I want to go ahead and throw this one out before we go to the top of the hour. I was hesitant to ask. Now, I know that I, yeah, we talked off air about it and you gave me the green light. So we're going to, we'll we'll do the the condensed version because I know that for a while you had been doing with all the promotions that you've been doing PR for Mm -hmm. combat zone was one of them. Good friend of ours, DJ Hyde been on a number of times and you've come on here to let us know about upcoming events for combat zone. Mm-hmm. And there were notices running around from your direction saying separation. Who gets the kids in the divorce? We don't know. <laughs> Who got? Di- oh, it's yeah, yeah. It got kind of bad. I laughed because there started to be a joke that uh, DJ Hyde was like that ex girlfriend that would never leave you alone. Um, <laughs> so, so for a while, like any time his name came up in conversation, he was referred to as the ex. Um, That's funny. So I want to say, because now my timeline is a little off, I, I want to say I left February, no, March. I left in March. Right. Was it March? Um, it was a month before Best of Best, because now my brain is just not configuring things. Blame the cold um, medicine. <laughs> and at least after I left, DJ called me and was like, I want you back. And I gave him my terms to come back, and he didn't agree. And, okay. Um and that proceeded for the next several months. I want you back. Well, what would it take? Well, this is what I want. Well, no, I'm not going to give you that. Um, in the end, I didn't get into everything I wanted. Uh, DJ had a particular need, and I need to be very clear. Um, I have never had an issue with DJ Hyde when it comes to money, because everybody asks that question. Everybody says that first. Everybody goes, well, he's so bad about money. No, no. I've never had any issue with a payday with DJ Hyde ever and and I'm, go, I'm trying to like go back to my memory i'm like have i ever had an issue have i ever had an issue have i ever had an issue no um now i know he has set up some new uh protocols for people in order to get paid um and some people have taken exception to that and they didn't do everything they needed to do and they didn't get paid and i actually commend dj hype for that because he needs to show that he is the boss and honestly that's one of his failures sometimes um, I will say my agreement to come back. Uh, I have gotten more than I expected, uh, in order to come back. Uh, I'm not overly happy about some things. I will say that very open and honestly. Um, I've never had a hatred for DJ Hyde. Um, but him and I can speak very candidly about wrestling. We can speak very candidly about the state of CDW, um, which I appreciate. Um, I do feel I would be better engaged with a different kind of relationship that I have with CDW, but in the moment it is what it is. Did I talk around that one completely? You did a beautiful job. <laughs> Thank you. Now, um, as I know that one of the bulletins but you just ask, said, ask the questions you want, ask any question you want. No, I'm actually um, good. I'm not good. See, you, you, you should know me by now. I will take what you give me in that particular regard, because I'm not going to grab a pickaxe and a shovel and sit back and start digging for stuff. So what you're comfortable saying is what, and what you're comfortable with going out over the air is what I'm comfortable with. You know, this, so, okay. so we, 
and I, I will say when when everything first happened and I did first leave, you know, it was very raw, it was very real, it was very intense uh, for a lot of different reasons and a lot of hurt feelings and a lot of stupid things that happened in the world of professional wrestling. Um, and I did, you know, I did the thing I always hate when anybody else says, I leave this place because I'm unhappy. You know, I always hate when people do that and I did it. And I did it because it had, A, it had to be real for me. Um, and I felt like I kept falling into a tr- the trap of, it's never going to change unless I change, and I wasn't changing. Um, and then on the other side, uh, for DJ, because I let him know where I was and where I thought things needed to be and where they weren't. And he just, even when I had the conversation with him about, you know, this isn't right and this is what needs to happen, and he said no, I said, well, then I think I'm done. He's like, all right, well, I'll talk to you tomorrow when you calm down. And I was like, hey, I'm not even upset. I'm just telling you how it is. And so it was like I had to do it to make it real for him. Well, um, as well. And then I think that what is what led to a lot of the, the X comments because, <laughs> um, just again, when he would come up in conversation, everybody would just sort of look at me really awkwardly. Like you couldn't talk, like maybe we shouldn't talk about him. Like, he's a, you know, DJ, I do you know, it's, he, he's kind of a thing, you know, it happens. Um, Hey, so Samper, I'm all over the world of professional wrestling. Like at some point we're going to bump into each other. And I think we physically, you know, had, bumped into each other I think uh, twice at Rockstar and once at Legacy before we actually resolved to the point that we are now so (laughs) do me a favor before I let you run and enjoy the rest of your night I know that there's an event that you've been pushing that is this coming weekend is Wrestling Geek Fest yes Uh, Wrestling Geek Fest it is going to be at the Holiday Inn in Strongsville in Strongsville Ohio just outside of Cleveland make sure you check it out go to Wrestling Geek Fest com for all the information about it. Three live wrestling events, comedy events all weekend long, vendors, um, legends. Make sure you check it out. WrestlingGeekFest.com And now that everything's back in place and you and DJ are living in somewhat of a harmonious situation, barbed wire not included. And yes, that was more <laughs> than just a pun. <laughs> At least not yet. There you go. Sure. I know uh, their next event is going to be on the uh, 12th of September, right? Correct. Down with the signals. Okay. Um, do me a favor. Go ahead and mark it down. I want to bring you back in before uh, before that date because I know that there's a lot to catch up on. And the next time you speak to DJ, tell him we said hi down here. Will do. Phil, always a pleasure. Thank you for hanging out for this first hour. And like I said, don't be a stranger because I want you to come back on a little bit more often. Sounds great. Uh, by the way, real quick, before you run, how can everybody track you down? Social media. Also, if they want to send show dates to get on the calendar. Aha. Um, so you can follow me online on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at PS Phenom. You can find me on Facebook at From the Desk of Nate Stein, which is facebook.com slash desk of Nate Stein. You can send me information there about your upcoming events or email it to Nate underscore Stein at hotmail.com. And what somebody recently told me, do a web search for Nate Stein. You will find me. Do a web search for Phil Stamper. You will find me. If you have an event that you want to make sure is on that calendar, find me, and I will get it up. I hate when I have promoters say, oh, you forgot me, and because of you, I didn't have a crowd. I'm like, well, if I'm your only way you're advertising, you have a whole other problem. But please, send me your information, and I will gladly get it up. Please. And, of course, you know that you've got, when you've got everything set and ready to roll, you know that you've got the invitation to post it on our friends page and fan page. You know this. I- I appreciate it. Not a problem. And by the way, by the way, I'd be remiss if I do, didn't do the shameless moment. So half of the half of the southeastern U.S. is going. Oh God, he's going to do it. Global Championship Wrestling Saturday night, August twenty second, Pell City Civic Center. Have you already got us on there? You should be. Okay. See, we do try to take care of things a little bit in advance in my neck of the woods. Some people <laughs> and some people, <clears throat> boss, need to remember that. And just kidding. And don't worry around here, I'm pumping him. Okay. Inside joke on that, and we'll tell. I'll talk about that one off air. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good friend of the family, and always very special guest, the Phenom Phil Stamper, Nate Stein, rolled into one. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? Don't answer that question. The world already knows. We'll be back on Back to Basics right after this. The Two Be Determined Show live Wednesday nights, 9 Central Standard Time. Join myself, the Orc of Ominous, the Wicked Nemesis, the Grand Design, Clyde Braddock, and... The Magic City Monroe, Fast Indy Lane, as we take you 
to the edge of uncensored. Yes, we go uncensored. So make sure you have your earmuffs. Ask your parents, for those of you, you know, that are a little young, maybe under 18, but make sure if you have any heart conditions or any mental defects, please listen because they may take effect right here live every Wednesday night, 9 Central Standard Time, Beyond Ringside Radio Network, beyondringside.com. This is Merciless Ray Mercer, Olympic gold medalist and board member of Find the Dream, and you're locked in to Beyond Ringside. Do you like beer? Do you like business? Do you like businesses that make beer? Then you'll love this new show. It's the Beer Trail Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Price, and we're going to travel through the world of craft beer and talk to the breweries and see how they got started and what inspired them to make their beer. So check it out at thebeertrailpodcast.com and tell your friends and hope to see you on the trail. Sunday nights at 11 p.m. Eastern here on BeyondRingside.com. Join us for the Midnight Black Mass. Myself, the Reverend Dan Wilson, brings you the dark gospel of professional wrestling. Uncensored, unedited, uncut, and not for the faint of heart. You can find out more about us at YouTube.com slash PottyHumor or subscribe at PottyHumor on iTunes and Stitcher today. Hey, Halfheads, it's a three-time NWA World Heavyweight Champion, Scrap by Anna Pierce, and just like me, you are locked in beyond ringside. It's liable to rain at any moment. Just don't accuse me of having a brainstorm. It's that simple, kids. Welcome back into Beyond Ringside, back to basics, 11 minutes after the 9 o'clock hour in the central time zone. Everybody else, do the math. I'm at home. I'm reading my clock. I'm in Studio One. End of discussion. You know where you are. You know what time it is by now. And for everybody listening on the replay side, results may vary. Fast Eddie Lane, live from Studio One. Thank you to Phil Stamper, Nate Stein. Yes, two names, one person. Do the math. It's that easy. Like to welcome in tag team partner, longtime friend, short time adversary, <laughs> and formally and hopefully again to be soon, host of Cause and Effect here on the Beyond Ringside Radio Network. Robert Cosper, what's up, buddy? What's up? Is it uh is it just me or, or is it just perfect that you're gonna welcome me back to Beyond Ringside and on the time frame as you're telling people? On my clock, it is nine one one. It just turned to nine one two. That's okay. It was nine one one when you started. That's there you go. It was. Do. It was eleven minutes after the nine o'clock hour. It was Central Time. Exactly. First off, Wick is sitting back saying, "You can stay retired all you want to." He's enjoying doing commentary, but he also knows Great. <laughs> you are not going to get away that easy. I will tell you that now. That is the best news I've heard all week right there. That's great. I think Wiz, I think Wick is still throwing lawn darts at his cause action figure. Yeah, he probably is. I put him in the unemployment line, so I, I know he's <laughs> glad to have the work. So that's awesome. <laughs> now, I've got to sit back and say this. For everybody who doesn't know, um, on in our home promotion, I say our very strongly, uh, Global Championship Wrestling, not only are Kaz and I part of the broadcast team, but also Kaz is the manager and business advisor for the uh, Powers That Be faction. Uh, the Hawaiian hitman, Micah Taylor, Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, uh, Veronica Fairchild, Mr. O'Hagan. And right now, they pretty much have been on and what's been called the hashtag gold rush as of late. I'm sure you've been working behind the scenes, keeping track of everything that's going on. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It is hashtag gold rush, man. Uh, now I'm kind of, I'm kind of retired hands off right now. Now I did have the honor this past Friday night to represent the PTB, uh, as Dan Sawyer and Mr. O'Hagan, well, I hate to say it, added two more belts, one more title to the collection as they, uh, captured the pro South tag team championship this past Friday, uh, is they defeated uh, the jump around gang. I mean, I call them the lay around gang because that's what they were doing was laying around when when the PTB was done. But hey, two more belts, man. Now, when you originally brought C and E to BR, you had the dream and the drive to get involved in pro wrestling. 
did you think for a moment that all of the insanity that you have been in the middle of with Global, with UIW, with Pro South, would ever come to this kind of a light? Seriously? <laughs> no. I, I mean, <laughs> to a point, yes, there was, there was a vision of what we wanted to do and things I had in my mind I wanted to do. Uh, yes, the, the hope was there, but that was coming from a guy who, well, okay, I think I know about wrestling. You know, coming from a guy now who does know about wrestling is two totally different things, you know. So there's a lot of lessons I learned in there that, um, wow, um, I had no idea about some of the lessons I was going to learn and some of the things that, that take place. And it's not just, hey, man, I, I think I've got a good idea. OK, great. I can make people laugh or I can aggravate people, whatever. There's a whole lot more to it. A whole lot more. It gets crazy. It gets yes. crazy. And you found yes. that out the first hand. Yes. I guess I'm going the long way around. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Yes, it's insane. <laughs> now, I know that, and this is something that you and I have had conversations about before you made your foray. Um, one of the pet peeves that you and I have had, and I know that Teddy Tudwiler is listening, I know that Wick is listening. I know that Amy Haven's listening. I know that a number of different managers, East and West, listen to Back to Basics because everything's on the table and nothing's off the record. And one of the conversations that we had had was the factor of managers either too much manager interference or too much manager interaction. Mm-hmm. Has your opinion on that changed since you've been ringside for a while? Believe it or not, no. Uh, I would almost say in global, it's um, it's probably too top heavy or too manager heavy, if you want to say. Um, which is why, again, I have no problem stepping back right now. I'm enjoying my time off. You know, uh, I'm glad Bullet Bob has suspended me. It's great. Um, you know, uh, I mean, I think. Uh, there's there was an incident now since since anything goes here right and I can still right. say pretty much whatever I want right yeah all right hashtag hell damn ass oh yeah yeah I'm not talking <laughs> about language I just meant uh, subject matter thank you Captain America <laughs> absolutely uh, there was an incident that took place with with me and Wick and there are people out there that'll say uh, hey Cos and Wick took away from the show because because Wick and I got into it at ringside and it continued up the up the uh, walkway around ringside and everywhere else we ended up and there are people that are oh man that took away you know blah 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 but then there's other people that are like holy crap cause and wick are going at it this place is insane you know so i I, i'm on the ladder on on the on the latter part of that if i thought it was great wick and i did what we had to do at that stage you know uh, I thought it was great. The people loved it, but there's a there's other people out there that are like, yeah, wow, those two are a bunch of jackasses for doing that, you know? Hmm. Yeah, I it, it there's a very weird line that is in place, and when you're looking at it from the fans' perspective, you have some that are like, ooh, yes, go, 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 and you have others like, really? And you found out you found out something that I found out moons ago but that's only because of chronological age and time served that's only because of those two factors right i was not around with methuselah where you were so, exactly yeah. you did not um you did not um have anything to do with uh, jurassic mania one absolutely not thank mm-hmm. the lord long before event senior 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 was around i think one two three no oh, boy. okay close enough who cares right right you can't please everybody with everything you do and stop caring about it. I mean, or stop caring about making everybody happy. Right. Go out, go out there and do the best that you can do for the people that you're working with and the people that are buying tickets to watch your product. Exactly. You know, you know and of course, coming up on August 22nd. Now, let me go ahead and say this one for a lot of us out there. Um, the original date was August 29, 8 29 15, and that got changed, which. Um, TJ, need to get with you about that one over on the uh, YouTube site because it's still reading the 29th and it's August 22nd for uh, GCW Summer Sizzle. 
or sub, Summer Sizzler 2015. Try saying that three times fast. It I'm not even going to try. There you go. Um, so August 22nd, 7.30 p.m., Pell City Civic Center on Stemley Bridge Road, 7.30 p.m. start time, 7 o'clock bell, $10 tickets. Um, already in the, Already signed. You've got a situation where it's going to be a tag team main event, the powers that be, the Hawaiian hitman Micah Taylor and Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, the world tag team champions, taking on the complete wrestling machine spiral and the real deal AJ Steele. Now, all the other stuff aside, how do you look at this match? <laughs> uh, seriously? Yeah. Ah, Sawyer and uh, Micah are going to kill him. I mean, that's just... Uh... Maybe I'm a little biased. No, actually, it should be a really, really good match. You have four extremely talented guys. Um, I'll tell you, I have a lot of respect for Spiral. A lot of respect for AJ Steele. I, I've got more respect for AJ Steele than I could possibly tell you. But unfortunately, the powers that be in Mad Dog Dan Sawyer, the Hawaiian hitman Micah Taylor, they are your world tag team champions. And... They will continue to be the world tag team champions after that. Uh, there's just too much experience with those guys. Look how long they've both been in the business. Mm-hmm. L- look how dominant they've been as a team. And they have been working as a team. And before, before they ever became a team, they have been against each other, back and forth, and know each other so well. And that's what makes a good tag team. AJ Steele and Spiral, for as good as they are, I don't think we'll be able to function as a team on the same level as Micah Taylor and Dan Sawyer. Yeah, I'm glad you put the words um, on that level due to the fact that I know for fact that they have teamed up before, but against different incarnations because I know the fact that they've uh, teamed up at UIW over in uh, Georgia Mm -hmm. to face uh, Sawyer and O'Hagan, Five Star Fight Club's version of Powers That Be. Heck of a team there also. Exactly. PTB, former tag team champions. I mean, uh, excuse me, five-star fight club, former tag champions. Absolutely. Multiple times. Yes, very true. And I'm just, I'm looking forward to this one on the 22nd. Of course, also found out that uh, Kira Hogan will be challenging Pandora for the women's championship. Uh, Veronica Fairchild, one of the newest members of the PTB. Um, Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sorry. Go ahead. No, we're finally going to have opportunity in the very near future, it won't be this upcoming show, but in the very near future, finally, the GCW Ladies Championship will be represented by a lady. Doesn't that, it just is great. Veronica is everything a lady should be. Class, sophistication, elegance. And then you have <clears throat> Fandora. Rougher than a night in jail right there, brother. I'll let you run with that one. Um, I'm just going to sit back and say now on the 22nd, like I said, Kira Hogan's going to be facing off against Pandora, and that one should be a very good match. Fans are going to be the winner in that one, and it could go either way because Kira Hogan's working to make a very solid name for herself. She's already been developing a great reputation as in-ring talent, uh, still relatively new to the world of pro wrestling, but definitely somebody who's on the, uh, who's on the rise. Yes, help me out with this. I'm not studied up, but I've actually heard good things. I've heard a lot um, of good things. And go for the, I'll give you this one. Even Smart Rage has had positive comments. That means nothing. She's a female. No, you know Smart Rage. If, if this person sucks, he'll start picking them apart. That's true, but he the ladies always sway his vote. So if, <laughs> he, was, if he was running down guys, I, I would I would hey I would take it to heart if he said something good about a guy, a lady. Yeah, they they always sway his vote. Yeah, like I said, I'm really looking forward to this one, and I know I okay. This is one of the things that I've actually enjoyed about not having to be the not having to deal with the commissioner's office and the responsibilities is the factor of I don't have to be there for the meetings. I don't have to be there for the conference calls. I just wait for the promoter to get in touch with me and say, okay, we're doing this. Have you heard anything about a finalization for the middleweight championship match? No, I'm suspended. Um, As far as I understand, that's just as far as I understand. I don't know that it's fact. Bullet Bob's got my calls on block. Um, It's going to be Mr. O'Hagan defending against uh, Mike Cruz, I do believe. But I'm not positive. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting to see what happens on that one. You're listening to Beyond Ringside, Back to Basics, 25 minutes after the top of the hour, 9 o'clock Central Time, in the Central Time Zone, 1024 Eastern, 8 and 724 Pacific Time. Yeah, I, I screwed up and said specific time because I was trying to get out all the time zones as quickly as I could during the first hour. Fast Eddie Lane, live from Studio One, live from the CNE Studios, and also in Birmingham, Alabama, the cause of Robert Cosper on this Tuesday night thing. Thank you to everybody who's listening through the live version, through .com, through the Beyond Ringside Radio app, through TuneIn Radio, Shoutcast, WinApp, as well as Ustream. Okie dokie. And of course, to everybody who's been catching us on the replay side, on the Beyond Ringside branded products, through iTunes, Podomatic, Stitcher, Spreaker, um, iHeartRadio, as well as, of course, you can catch a lot of the st- um, all the replays through the media page at BeyondRingside.com. And, of course, if you're listening through the apps, don't forget, when we sign off live, replays will kick in full gear. So, once again, you're not going to miss anything. Recent episodes of complete broadcasts of the Midnight Black Mass, the To Be Determined show, Back to Basics, Wrestle Rage Radio with Smart Rage and Stan, and Beyond Ringside Live are all in rotation right now. Um, I know things got, have been a little bit weird as far as timings go. Now, I know that there is a part of you that would like to bring back C and E. And there's a part of you that is like, you've had so much going on both professionally and personally that you haven't really had the opportunity to focus in on, um, on a return. I know your tag team partner, Stuart couch, the effect and the mad dog, Dan Sawyer, um, are chomping at the bit. Are they still, they were chomping at the bit. Are they still actually? Yes. Stuart mentioned it today when I told him that I was going to be on with you tonight. Uh, yeah, we we have some things in the works. Uh, you know, we're we're taking CNE in a different direction. Cause, yes, like you said, I've I've been really busy professionally and really busy personally. Um, yeah, we we have some things in the works. We want to take CNE differently because uh, if you if you get to the end of the day, Stuart and I are both we're nerds. We're just cool nerds. You right. Know? Uh, we love sci-fi. We love old movies. We love old TV. Uh, good friend of mine, Chris Thomas, has really uh, – man, he's probably saved my life lately because he's gotten me hooked in, um, into collecting old toys, man. He's brought me into this world. I mean, I think he needs to spend a weekend in hell for doing it because it's expensive. <laughs> but, I mean, man, it's a lot of fun. Uh, all of us have that in common. So Chris is coming into the CNE fold with us, along with Dan. You know, yeah. Uh, man, I think we're just going to take it across the board. Excuse me, and just man, our our nerd world of of sci fi movies, toy collecting, all that. And it was real weird because I know you're going to touch on this in a minute too. Uh, how that world uh, kind of in the comic book world itself meshes into to pro wrestling. You know, yeah. and there was an there was an article on Yahoo today for uh, Stephen. Uh, what's his name that plays Arrow? Stephen going, Amell. Going, going, yeah, gonna gonna his feud with uh, or his deal on Raw last night with uh, with with a uh, Stardust. You know, uh, man, we just we just kind of think we can get this whole genre. It all it all all the all those topics go together. I think that we can put together a weekly offering. You know that we can entertain people and not just be strictly wrestling you know what i mean or not strictly star wars or whatever you know yeah and that's something because um you know you can officially laugh now because i have not taken the time to go see ant-man yet speaking of movies um i wanted to haven't had the chance to everything's been absolutely nuts and um you know with everything else happening with me and Everything from work to personal, it's just kind of like theater. Where the hell did that go? And I've got movie passes waiting on me. All, all I got to do is get there. Um, I'm going to come back to that in a second, though, because there's also another topic. You were talking about um, different things that, of course, are represented by action figures. And I know that you saw the uh, meme that went up when the American Dream Dusty Rhodes passed away. Did you ever get a chance to see the one or the action figure heaven welcoming Roddy Piper to the fold? No, I've not. I've I've taken a, a huge uh, social media break and mostly an internet break. Um, no, I, I was actually curious what 
WWE and the wrestling world in general has done for Piper because that's a legend, man. A true yeah. legend. And think about it. That was two that have passed away within two months. Yes. Um, you had, you know, and this is something that I brought up on BR Live, and I'm gonna, I want your perspective on this. You have two of the better and or best. T- I mean, I'm, I'm still waiting for the argument on the other side of the coin um, of all time. When it comes down to it, because you had you had Rhodes who could talk people into the chairs to back him. You had you had Piper who would talk people into the chairs to bash him. And I go ahead. I, I would even go a step farther and say not only did he talk Piper talk him into the chairs, he talked him right back out of the chairs to throw things at him. They were going to buy a ticket because they hated the man's guts. Yeah, I mean, because and when you heard the word um, back a couple of Fridays ago. You know, you sit back and say you always know where you were when these moments happen. It's like, what were you doing when you found out Piper passed? I was driving home. Um, Dan Sawyer sent me a text and said Roddy Piper just passed away. Like, wow. Um, yeah, I was driving home. My phone went off. Like, Crap. And since we haven't had a chance to get to, um, to get together as far as you on air, is there a moment in particular that stands out with Piper in it that um, has been one of your favorites? Oh, that's easy for me. It's easy for me. And I kind of alluded to this with you. Um, I think it was you. Uh, anyway, um, off air a little bit. of uh, you, just, you just saw a reincarnation of it just last night with uh, Stardust and um, Arrow. Man. Yeah, that guy. Uh, <laughs> War to settle the score, man. Uh, Madison Square Garden, it was Hogan versus Piper. But, you know, you had T sitting in the audience. You know, Cindy Lauper had come out with Hogan. And that's, to me, still one of the loudest pops you've ever heard, that I've ever heard, of when they had Hogan down, Orndorff had come out, uh, Orton was there. I believe Orton and Orndorff were there. Anyway. They they were about to knock. Piper had Cindy Lauper. He was about to lay Cindy Lauper out because she was going to save Hogan, you know. And Mister T came over that guardrail. The place went crazy. That's what set up for WrestleMania one. And man, Piper, man, just like the pro that he was, never broke character. Kept going. I mean, that's everybody. I know everybody in the world is going to say the. Uh, the snook a moment of busting the coconut over his head or dog collar mats with, with Greg Valentine. To me, that was the epitome of Roddy Piper's legacy of he helped usher in WrestleMania. Not not WrestleMania 5 or 9 or whatever, WrestleMania. You could not have had it without Roddy Roddy Piper. You know, you brought up Stephen Amell. And this is one that I've been waiting for. Due to the fact that I've been very, tre- I'm really very trepidatious and nervous for the world of pro wrestling when you expand to incorporate mainstream entertainment, especially someone that has a show that is as hot as Arrow is. Because you have people who parlay, okay, the reason why I say it like that is because Vince is notorious for bringing in guest stars and guest attractions and stuff like that. And once every blue moon, you have somebody who is genuinely a fan and wants to utilize their celebrity status in order to make a real, real appearance on the product. You know, they had the situation with Ronda Rousey back at WrestleMania and everything that happened through that. The, the, both the MMA world and the pro wrestling world popped on command. It's like, oh my God, Ronda Rousey, hello, boner. And, of course, I did that after ESPN The Bodies issue, but we'll talk about that at a later point in time on Beyond Ringside Late Night. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. If you've never seen that layout, look it up. Dead serious. Ronda Rousey, ESPN, The Bodies Issue. All I got to say right there. And that will start trending in about now. But And you've got somebody like Stephen Amell who's actually genuinely been a fan of the WWE product. You got to remember, Amell does a lot of his own stunts on Arrow. He did a lot of his own stunts on, on when he made the cameos on Flash. So for somebody like him who genuinely wants to be there, I say this is a genuine score for WWE 
as well as ah okay i recognize that number <laughs> sorry about that <laughs> yeah i know we got smoked last week and i recognize the number again sorry not gonna go for it twice you can't blame me i'm on the horn with you. i know i know but seriously do you look at it from the same perspective as far as being a genuine score for WWE? Mm, I don't know. Uh, not right now. I, I think it still has the opportunity to, to play out well, but um, not right now. I'm not fired up about it. I mean, because it's like you said, you're playing, a, you're playing a dangerous game. It's an old formula. It's an old formula that, that goes back to at least WrestleMania 1. But, and it's, and it's, for the most part, it's been successful. But, you know, you're in such a world now where everybody's a wrestling fan in some way, shape, or fashion for the most part, you know? Even if you just follow the Twitter wars or follow them on social media, you're still a fan to some degree. Or you like Total Divas because you think the, the, the Bellas are cool. I mean, I know, shame on me for even saying that. But, uh, you know, and it's so much more accessible uh Okay, Arrow's a, a great hot show, and um, okay, we're going to let a Mel get in the ring here. Okay, maybe it's going to play out well. I don't know. People apparently have an, enough interest. But, you know, hey, NCIS is a great show too, but I don't think Mark Harmon needs to be in the ring taking body slams either. So. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I don't know. Now, taking this one over to a different area, let me go ahead and do this. Um, I talked to Phil about this when he was on air with us um, in, in the first hour. Um, this past weekend, we had the Beyond Ringside Fantasy Draft for the women. And we talked a little bit about this earlier this afternoon, and you've had a chance to do a little bit of homework on this one. Um, I'm going to give you the first nine names that were called out during this draft, and those will be the exempt list. Okay. So those are the ones you can't play with. So we'll take it from there, and I'll ask you to give me your first three, the first nine names. And the first, there, it's myself, Mark Mabo Bowen, and the Wicked Nemesis, and we each had one pick during the first three rounds. And I'm going to work on that sound effect, too. Hmm. Anytime I click on a call, it's just going to be a commode flush. Um, from there. <laughs> well, whoever Wick has picked is incorrect. I'll just go ahead and say that. Let's see. The first nine names, and they're in this order. Myself, Mabo, then Wick. And just repeat. Jessica Havoc, Paige, Awesome Kong, Cheerleader Melissa, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Kimberly, Bailey, and Natalia. Those are your first nine. Those are the ones that are off the board. Who would you who would be your first round draft choice? Uh, first round's easy. It's after that it gets complicated. Okay. Easy. Lisa Marie Veron. Or Vera and however you want to say it. Victoria, Tara, whatever. Hands down, my all time favorite. Okay. Very good choice, and I'm surprised she actually went under the radar because, the well, a lot of people think that she still stepped away from the business, and they're not keeping track of the fact that she has been appearing on Paragon Pro Wrestling. She's actually been in a good series with La Rosa Negra, who was actually my eighth-round draft choice. So, and so I've got to give credit where credit is due for anybody who thinks that uh, Lisa Maria has gone by Sia. Uh, she is back in ring on a limited basis and still got it, plain and simple. And I know that was one that I was going to tell you about about uh, Paragon Pro. So if you get a chance to look that one up, definitely. Okay. And let me go and lay this one out there. And this is just me talking on this one. I t we, we've had a conversation, and I really didn't bring it up this past Sunday that much because of the factor we were concentrating on the draft. And for those who have not watched part two of Lucha Underground's Ultima Lucha on the El Rey Network, Go back and watch it. They absolutely got it right from start to finish, bell to bell, opening credits to fade to black. And one of the matches that I'm just going to go ahead and sit back and say, I made, I made um, very positive comments about it on social media, but I'm also going to revise and extend in this particular regard. Um, you had Vampiro versus Pentagon Jr., and this was going to be a um, no-holes-barred match. 
a lot of people were curious. And now, like I said, I knew the match was in the can for a couple of weeks. So I'm just going to go ahead and sit back and put this one out there. I don't read spoilers. I don't care to read spoilers. I'm not going to read spoilers. It's my business. And even if I do read them, I'm still going to watch it and let it un unfold in an organic manner. Okay. So there were a couple of glitches in that match. But it was nothing that genuinely took away from that match. And I'm going to sit back and say Vampiro handled himself admirably in that one. And Pentagon Jr. is probably one of the most underrated talents in Lucha Underground. Even I, I say that he is, a, he is top tier in that company, but a lot of people still overlook him. And somebody like that you can't overlook. Now, let me, let me be sure I'm with you. When you're saying Vampiro, Yes. You're talking WCW Vampiro. He and Sting set each other on fire that day. Yeah, Ian Hodgkinson, yes. Okay. Uh, you're going to be a bigger fan of that than me. I was, not a, I was not a fan of the character to me. You know, the guy was incredibly talented, but the character to me was like a cross between Papa Shango and The Undertaker. <laughs> I mean, you know, and I'm not a huge Undertaker fan. I'm, I'm in the minority over there, too, because the only Undertaker gimmick that I've liked or Undertaker character version, whatever you want to say that I've liked, has been the American Badass, which I read is they're bringing back. On The Undertaker? I read that a um, couple of weeks ago that it was being discussed, bringing that back. Hmm. I'd, be kind of, I'd be kind of surprised to see it now. When it happened in 2000, 2001, it was cool. Uh, but since they brought back the dead man, you know, and it's taken off and the streak and all oh, that's become so uh, publicized and, and, and famous, I should say now. Right. I, I don't see it. I don't see him. I don't see the American badass gimmick working again, but I loved it. That was my favorite version of Taker. But anyway, I totally changed the subject. I apologize. Okay. No, it wasn't changing the subject. Um, and for Chestman over in the chat room, I'm sorry we're not taking phone calls on this segment right now. We're actually going to get ready to start heading for the Radio Ranch. I appreciate the interest. If there's a question you'd like to lay out in the chat room, you are more than welcome to do so, and we'll tackle it live on air from that vantage point. But right now, we're not opening up the phone lines. Um, but from there, you know, I'm I'm kind of curious to see how things every how things really do play out between Taker and Lesnar at SummerSlam. SummerSlam going to four hours this year. Really. That's a long show. I mean, plain and simple. It's just a case of I'm not a big fan of the concept of them taking another show four hours when they're having a when they're having continuity problems, booking a three hour show and then SmackDown. Yeah, four hours is a long time for a for a pay per view. I mean, Mania, I could see going for. I mean, I know SummerSlam's your quote unquote second biggest or whatever, but I don't I don't think there's a four hour show in that because uh, traditionally, or at least over the past few years, SummerSlam's been a, one of the bigger bombs of the year, is it not? It really depends. I think last year was better than a lot of people thought it was going to be. And yes. that has been something that WWE has been blessed with over the last few months because you've had a situation where people look at it and go, how can this be? And then after the show was over with, that's better than I thought it was. Yeah, yeah, to a point, I'll agree with that. I now I was thinking you now SummerSlam of 2013 was horrible. It was it was totally. If I'm not mistaken, you and I totally predicted the whole thing. So did so did Hitman. Uh, of you know, I think everybody knew there was going to be that was the cash in right. Right. When Triple H was going to turn, there'd be the cash in, and, th and that's when the authority was uh, formed, correct? Right. What, what, what that SummerSlam? Give or take. Yeah, was, I mean, I think everybody in the world saw that coming, and it was just, yeah, okay, that really wasn't that eventful. Well, when you had this, yeah, and, you know, with Rollins doing the Mania thing earlier this year, and I, there have been so many question marks from so many different people, so many different fans regarding whether or not the – I'm of the ilk that the belt does not need to change hands at SummerSlam. Rollins uh, needs to Rollins needs to hold on to the title belt. I have no problem with Rollins as a champion. I don't. I'm, I'm enjoying his title run. You know, um, 
and and it, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't have the problem with Rollins. So I guess I'm actually going to agree with you. Well, I've That's got weird. <laughs> that is actually a rarity in this world. But do me a favor. Let me do this right here. I am also going to. I'm working on shifting around sounds. So let me go ahead and do this and click save, and we should be good. Working on Skype in the middle of a show. Go figure that one out. But we'll tell you what. I'm going to go ahead and start running for the Radio Ranch on this particular part of it. But I'm going to go ahead and lay this one out there. You, um, you've taken, um, you've heard me lay out the questions. I've got. I know that you've got a few that you are points of interest that you want to lay out there. I do. I thought you did. I don't know that I do. Um, no, you, you, you called and said, "Hey, Cos, my ratings are down. Can you entertain us for about thirty minutes?" <laughs> Of course, that's the way it always flies. <laughs> that was my whole plan. I don't know that I, I don't know that I really had any points because I've, 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 I've tuned into a little Impact, but I hadn't watched a lot of WWE, and um, I'm suspended from Global Championship Wrestling, so I'm kind of, kind of out. Now I thought that was supposed to be up, and you were gonna, um, that you had the option of coming back on the 22nd, or is that still up to Armstrong? You're going to have to get that old man to use his arthritic hands and pick up the telephone to answer some questions, which he refuses to do. I don't know if the battery in his hearing aid's dead or if his arthritis is flared up or he doesn't know what that ringing sound is. I don't know. Well, he's been hit a number of times, so that ringing sound could actually be a chair shot reverberating. I agree. And the man, but honestly, the man's not been hit enough. Cause, come on. What? Now, I'm going to go ahead and put this one out there. I'm going to ask you for a teaser. Are you going to acquiesce to your co-hosts and possibly bring back CNE in the near future? Ooh, spot. That is a spot. Um, yeah, I'm working on some stuff, but you know how it is at CNE. Uh, the, um, the whole group loves to uh, partake and take credit. You know I do all the work. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's called production side. It is. It is. I, I've, I've told everybody involved, uh, if you guys want to learn to produce, I'll bring it back tomorrow. You know? Uh, nobody's taking me up on the offer. Uh, yeah, I'm working on it, but I've got to, like, you know, you understand my pain there. This one this is something you and I really totally agree on. Uh, you know, I've got to design some graphics, set up a website, blah, blah, blah. It's a whole gigantic headache that nobody realizes, for the most part, what, what kind of a headache it truly is. But, yeah, Stuart actually threw out some, some good ideas today, so I was kind of surprised. But, uh, yeah, I, we're working on it. We're working on it. I just don't, I don't know how fast I'll have it done. It takes time. Trust me on that one. Because yes. I, I remember when I took the hiatus and I was ready to come back, it's like it still took two more weeks for when I was ready to come back before everything kicked into gear. Well, see, we're we're still at a stage. There's two out of the three that are ready to come back, and the, <laughs> the third one is you. <laughs> yeah, the third one's me. It's the production side that's not quite ready. Yeah, the production side's enjoying the break. And when are you going to be brave enough to get back on social media? Again, we're talking about things I'm not missing. Uh, I really thought I was going to miss social media, but you know what? I don't. It's great. Um, it's kind of peaceful sometimes, isn't it? Man, you just don't know. Um, <laughs> you know, I had to lay off. Uh, we're not going to get into that. But um, I really thought I was going to miss it. But you know what? I don't. Uh, I, I, I get no alerts that I'm tagged in something that I don't even know what in the world I'm tagged in. Uh, it's great. I understand the concept. Uh, real quick, folks, don't forget you can also find uh, his ta his. Mm, contemporaries Mad Dog Dan Sawyer on Facebook O'Hagan on Facebook, Twitter, and uh, Instagram uh, Veronica Fairchild I know is on Facebook Not sure about the others um, From there, the Hawaiian hitman Micah Taylor I believe is also on Facebook and on Twitter uh, Micah Taylor 01 uh, Cause of course taking the time off away from social media And enjoy the break while it lasts I'll put it that way Because when you kick it back into full gear It will be non-stop all over again Yes, I know. That's why I've got it and off. None. Zilch. Zero zilch. Not a yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now I am. You can get me. Uh, if you want Veronica's Instagram account, 
that is paid. So uh, just get with Eddie. Send Eddie the email, and he'll get you all the information. For you to send me your credit card info, so I'll add you to Veronica's Instagram. Nicely done, because I don't want the credit card numbers. You can have them. That's fine by me. I'll take your credit card number all day. Folks, here's the quick rundown. Live programming resumes on Beyond Ringside Sports Radio tomorrow, August the 12th at 9 p.m. Central Time with the To Be Determined show. Wicked Nemesis, Angie Nemesis, Clyde Braddock, possibly Steve Styles. You never know who's going to be popping in on the To Be Determined show. We'll be picking it back up with the trifecta this coming Sunday, and that's going to be... August 16, Beyond Ringside Live, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, 5.30 Central. Yours truly, Wicked Nemesis, Mark Mabo Bowman, and then Wrestle Rage Radio with Smart Rage and Stand at 8, Stan, there is no D, at 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, and the brand new edition of the Midnight Black Mass, starring the Reverend Dan Wilson and Andrew Alexander, kicks in at 11 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Hold on, that's not right. 10 Central, 8 Pacific. There you go. I'll do the math later. That's all I'm, I I don't even worry about math anymore. Mm. Production side. Yeah, okay. Put it all together and it spells. <laughs> Keep you, your eyes. Could you spell that, please? Uh, no. Oh, okay. No. Keep your eyes open on beyondringside.com, the home for all things, and of course the media page where you can find previous episodes. <laughs> Links to previous episodes and interviews, very much available through the media page. For Beyond Ringside branded products, Ustream, you can listen live, replays done through YouTube, iTunes, Podomatic, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. <laughs> Chat room is open 24-7. If there's a comment you want to lay out there or a question that you want to lay out there for one of our hosts or one of our guests, be sure to put it in the chat room. Be more than happy to pass it along or answer it live. And, of course, you can find us at Beyond Ringside on Twitter, Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside Live. The easy way to do it. Yes, it is Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside, but we're sending everybody over to the fan page because you know the way Facebook has been acting lately. It's that simple. From there, me personally, at Fast Eddie Lane over on Twitter, and for my friends in the Birmingham metropolitan area, Birmingham, Alabama, that is. I don't make too many trips to the UK, even though Matt Denton's still been trying to get me to come over that way. <laughs> at Fast Eddie Lane, L-A-Y-N-E over on Twitter, and of course, for my friends in the Birmingham metropolitan area, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody this coming Friday night at Buffalo Wild Wings in Alabaster. Friday night karaoke kicks off at 9 o'clock p.m. with yours truly as your humble host. Come out, let's have some fun, and a good time will be had by all. Thank you again to Phil Stamper for coming on board this evening. Folks, remember, if you've got an upcoming event that you want to have mentioned wrestling, check in with him. Nate Stein, Phil Stamper over on Facebook, PS Phenom over on Twitter, and email. Listen to the first hour of the show. He'll put it out there. Also, from that vantage point, if you have a live wrestling, mixed martial arts, boxing, or sporting event, feel free to post it over on Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside and Facebook.com slash Beyond Ringside Live. Once again, these are for live events only. Retail links will be obliterated and you will be banned in a heartbeat. It's just that simple. Until next time, thank you again, Phil Stamper. For the cause, Robert Cosper. Oh, I'm over and out, but I want to put out Bullet Bob Armstrong's phone number. We're going to help him find you his are not going to do that. You are not going to do that. Look, he's lost his phone, obviously. He won't take my call. <laughs> this is the Magic City Motor Mouth, Fast Study Lane. Until next time, have a great night. We'll see you right back here as we all go beyond ringside. And you know something? Don't make it too complicated, because it doesn't have to be. Because every once in a while, you got to remember to take it back to basics. Bye for now. <laughs>